Karen Medusa, and I was Jim Kerstoffer's student and his friend. Um, I'd like to start off a couple years ago. Jim was to present a jazz clinic at the Niagara County Music Educators Conference, and he needed his bio to include in the program. Before the conference date, Jim became ill, so I decided to help him out and write the bio for him. After months and months of extensive online research, cross-country travel, and talking with Jim, I proudly penned a bio which I would like to share with you today. Please know, the statements you're about to hear are true, and personally endorsed by Jim Kerstorff. To quote the email he sent to me on February 16, 2010, the bio is perfect, dash, dash. It's printer ready, exclamation point. Jim Kerstorff professional bass player and music educator, was born and raised in Buffalo, New York. While studying music at the University of Buffalo, Jim, better known as Badass, was often seeing him with fellow musicians Dick, you talking to me, Griffo, Dave, no messy, Pilecki, Nelson, if you say anything about my height, I'll break you in two, Star, and Amrod Killer Chodos. Upon completion of college, Jim had a few short recording and touring stints with Herbie Hancock, Thelonious Monk, the Rolling Stones, The Who, and all of Eric Clapton's bands. He was by far the best bass player that these big groups have ever had, but his take no shit attitude often caused tension amongst the group members, and as a result, he was asked to leave. He then recorded and toured with the Buffalo-based jazz rock band Spyro Gyro. Currently, he is professor of music at Villa Maria College, where he teaches music theory, bass guitar, and conducts a jazz ensemble. His fear and intimidation method of teaching produces extremely successful results with his students. When asked what motivates these students to practice three to six hours per day for their weekly bass lessons, they simply reply, um, have you seen how big Jim is? <laughs> On a side note, rumor has it that the Jim character made famous by the popular 1970s Jim Croce hit single, You Don't Mess Around With Jim, was loosely based on the life of Jim Kerstorff. <laughs> NCMA, NCMA is very honored to have Mr. Kurtzdorfer present at our second annual conference. We ask that you please give a standing ovation to Jim when he is introduced, at the conclusion of the session, and any time he does anything at all during the session, including, but not limited to, taking a drink of water. We also ask that you refrain from personally asking Jim any questions, but instead, please provide a line 3 by 5 index card to write down any questions directly to him. Be sure to include your name and email address on the front left-hand side of the card. Jim will respond to your questions at some point this year, but don't hold your breath. <laughs> so, without further ado, please give a warm NCMEA conference welcome to Mr. Jim Badass Kurtzdorfer. <laughs> Do you know that moment when you press send on the computer? And you think, oh no, oh no. I was sweating bullets for a while, but um, it was all fun. So, um, I have to make a confession. I was scared to death to take lessons from Jim Kerstorfer. Dick Griffo was the one who insisted I take lessons from him, as I am the only bass player in Dick's jazz workshop, and I really sucked. I'll never forget that first lesson, walking to the front door and looking up to Jim, who at six foot five inches was standing at the front stoop which added a good five to six more inches, and his sandals and socks, which added another inch, and thinking, holy shit, this is the biggest man I've ever seen. <laughs> it was just minutes into that lesson when I remember looking up to the ceiling and saying, yes, it was at that point that I knew these things. I knew I had the best. I knew that I would never, ever have to worry about how I played. I wouldn't have to worry about not understanding something. I knew that whatever I prepared for my lesson would be more than good enough. It would be perfect. I had a teacher who knew me musically better than I knew myself. I also quickly realized that I never had and I never will have a teacher like Jim. With Jim, it didn't matter whether, I, whether or not I was prepared. It was just about making music and with an unbelievably talented musician and having a blast in the process. He loved music. That's all it was about. Jim was my Field of Dreams teacher. Each lesson when we played together, he on piano, me on bass, I would say to myself, I'm playing bass with Jim Kerstorff. <laughs> on that first day, though, there was one thing that I would not discover for a while, 
and that was that Jim was going to be, become much more than a mentor to me. He was going to become one of my truest and dearest friends, a friend like none I've ever had or ever will have. Whether we were having a lesson or watching Catch Cab on TV, he always knew all the answers. Jim always made me feel, made me feel like I was the most important person in the world to him. He definitely was apt to me, and he was such a supportive friend. No matter how sick or weak he, Jim felt, he and Pat came to every one of my Goodrich gigs, sitting front and center. I cannot begin to tell you what that meant to me. I know it would take years for me to grasp all that Jim has taught me about music. I also believe it will take many more years to grasp all that Jim has taught me about life. I truly believe that God gave me a gift when he placed Jim into my life. Recently I realized that God gave me an extra Jim bonus by placing him in my path in what turned out to be his last few years on this earth. I learned that in dying, Jim, dealing with dying, Jim taught me how to live. Even when Jim was at his worst physically, he would just keep living, giving, loving, laughing, mentoring, and even playing as much as he could until his heart stopped. I never ever heard him complain. The worst I ever heard him say about how he felt was so-so or menza menza. Jim was fortunate enough to, fortunate to have so many wonderful people in his life, and I know he loved and cared for all of us very much. The week before he passed, he was very sick, and two of his students were going to be playing a recital here at school. There was no doubt in his mind where he was going to be that day, and remember, you don't mess around with Jim, so I dared not say anything to suggest otherwise. I'm sure everyone in attendance that day was so relieved when he made it to that piano bench, sat down, and played for his students. No matter how bad he felt, he would always try his best to be there for the people he cared about. That was Jim. But besides music and his teaching, Jim's true love was Pat. God sure knew what he was doing when he sent Pat Armstrong his way. As I often asked her, what could be better for Jim than waking up each day to this absolutely beautiful, strong, intelligent, and loving woman? The answer is nothing. She was his rock. She was his heaven on earth. He adored her, and they adored each other. I was never afraid to show any inadequacies of my musical knowledge to Jim, and believe me, there are many. But one week, Jim gave me an assignment that had something to do with the pentatonic scales, and for some reason, neither of us noticed that I really had no clue what he was asking me to do. That never happened before. Usually it was, do you understand, Karen? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Or he would ask me a question, I'd answer it, he'd smile and wait, I'd give a different answer, he'd smile and wait, I'd give the correct answer, he'd move on. Anyway, my lessons were every two weeks, so being the anal person that I am, I started on the assignment as soon as I came home that day. You can only imagine the panic I felt when I realized I did not know what the hell I was supposed to do. It was terrible. Every day that first week I was trying to figure it out, I remember thinking, I have to call Jim. I can't do this. I should just call Jim. But for some unknown reason, I didn't. Then during the second week, something happened. The light went on and I figured it out. I was so pumped. That Saturday, as I handed him my paper, I told him how I hadn't understood the assignment at first and how I was very hesitant to call